everyone, uh, my name is Elisa Gonzalez. I am an occupational therapy assistant. I work for Milestone Therapy in Charlotte, North Carolina. Today we are going to talk about sensory bins. development, uh, and then also language development. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do, of course, is talk about the actual bin. Uh, there are different bins that you can use, different containers, different bags. Uh, they all serve a purpose. I went into detail with them. Um, for instance, this one right here is my favorite one, uh, just because it is able to be used with different age groups. Unlike the taller containers, such as this oatmeal and then this plastic bin, you have to be able to have a good arm length to reach in and grab and search for items. Uh, another container is this tin container, which I'll get into more detail all the reasons and benefits of using one of these. Uh, also, there are these mystery bags where you stick items inside to search for. That way you can uh, develop your skills on recognizing what an object is just by feeling it. Second thing that we're going to talk about are the what I call base of sensory bins. There are different items that you could use. Uh, there's rice, there's sand, there's dirt. Uh, these colorful pom-poms, uh, there is shredded paper if you like, and then also there are my favorite, which are beans. Beans I like just because if you were to get messy, which sensory bins you are going to get messy and it's going to spill, you, uh, they're easier to pick up and also I like the way it feels and also the noise that you could use, which also goes back to this container, the tin container, where it could build up some tolerance to noise. Also, with rice, you could dye it different colors. Uh, you could work on understanding colors and also sorting. Um, that's an awesome other activity that we can talk about in another video. The third, I items that we're going to talk about is the searchable items which are items that are right here there are different items you could put in and be creative what i have right now are these small erasers um small different shapes basic colors beads that you could string also puzzles and um, each item that you are searching for you could also incorporate into a gross motor activity such as doing an obstacle course where you have to run to the other side of the room, search for something in the sensory bin, then run back and string the beads together or put the puzzle piece together or build a uh, pattern that uh, search for the red and green stars and make a pattern. <music> we're going to talk about are the utensils that we could use in a sensory bin. There are spoons that you could play with to work on self-feeding tasks, uh, the scooper to help build uh, scissor fine motor skills, tweezers to work on the pincer grasp, um, the whisk so that way you can work on building up your upper body strength and and also a big scoop, spoon where you could scoop out items. Also, the last but not least is the sorting containers that I like to incorporate, where you could use different size. If your kid's going to search for the green pom poms, put them in the big container or put them in the small container. Also, in different bowls or a cup or so if you have one of these cups where you could use the different colors you could have the little child sort the different colors um, while you're searching for an item such as put all the yellows in the yellow cup so these are just a few ideas that you could use to create your own sensory bin while using household items 
one big thing to remember is to have fun.